going to start right off with Jim Bolin. Why is this conference? I'm going to need you one. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Ready? That's how you start these things. You're going to need you guys to refer to the guy on the end. <laughs> Why is the conference important to you and the bricklayers? Well, you know, I learned the trade here in this area, in residential construction, and I didn't see any women working in it. And that was back from 74 to 78, and I went to California. And then when I got into commercial construction, all the crafts, including the bricklayers, had some <laughs> women. Not a lot. And uh, we began to see more of them, and I thought uh, it was really good for the women, and good for the industry, and good for society. And uh, I haven't backed away from that belief, you know? And uh, since I became president of the union, we had some very lean times. We had to lay off a lot of people, shortage of revenue. But now we're coming out of that. And now we're able to get back in the right groove and work with the women who want to have careers in our crafts. And, uh, you know, there's no doubt that there wouldn't be in it if they weren't as good as the men, at least as good. Sometimes they have to be better. and. Uh, we have to do, you and I have had this conversation, we have to do more work with our employers to pave the way for not only women, but for people who are, quote unquote, that word I don't care for, minorities, uh, to get into our trades. The, those people are the future of the industry, uh, people that look like us. Uh, uh, many of them are moving on to other things, and there's plenty of room to diversify uh, my union anyway. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Why is this conference important to your union? Well, you know, let's be honest. A couple of years ago, uh, most most unions didn't even know what you were trying to accomplish here. Uh, for me, I always think about uh, my sisters. I got three sisters. I got my mom passed short, a little while back. I got a young daughter, and I always think about how they should be treated. And I don't think it's been fair across the board. I don't think it's been fair for a long time for the women in the trade. And I truly believe that they should be treated as our equals. Um, <laughs> you hear stories about how some of the women out there in the trade are, are treated. I, I don't understand it. What, what man would want to treat a woman differently than his wife, his mother, his daughter? It shouldn't be. So that, that truly is what's important to me is uh, I, I see it growing. I see, you know, first of all, when they say unions are dead, uh, uh, you know, come on, you're showing a whole different thing here. This is, this is unbelievable. The reports of our death are greatly mistaken. No, no, you, you got to have it. You, you must be the, the largest growing service out there right now is uh, women in trade. It's, it's phenomenal. So I'm going to give you a new question. Oh. Arla, do you really want to answer no, this one? Right. <laughs> All right. Eric, can you please share one lesson from your own success in the trade do you think could help women advance? Well, we met on Thursday, and I had the conversation that I think the, the, the sister covered it quite well before. Is that right? Only one sister covered it. Two. And man or woman. Mike, we can't hear. Hello, hello, hello. Outside voice. Hello. In what? Here. Thanks. As the sister said earlier, there's no limit, man or woman, to what anyone could do or achieve. I came from a local for a very long period of time where while we don't have a high percentage of women, women were very commonplace. When I became an international rep, I could see more and more that it, inclusion wasn't in every area. So to migrate from the first question into the second question, I think uh, hard work and success paves the way no matter who you are, man or woman. And I told, uh, I told the ironworkers who came to my local union hall on Thursday night, I, I taught my girls 
I have two daughters and a son. I taught my girls to throw like a girl. And that's not an insult. They played collegiate softball and they were better baseball players than my son. And so for me, it's all about hard work. And each one of you, uh, President Boland said it quite well, many of the women had to work harder or endure more hardships along the way and be just to be better or considered equals or rivals. So for me, I, I just say that keep your nose to the grindstone. We're not as good as we need to be, but we're much better than we used to be. And we need much more improvement. We're gonna share. Thank you. Jim. May I call you Jim? You may call me anything. Thank you. You're going to call me anything you like anyway, aren't you? <laughs> I'm going to call you my brother because you really are a brother. So, um, I'm not supposed to say that. 15 years ago, 15 days ago, 15 minutes ago, women who wanted to have support groups within their unions were considered rebel rousers. A conference like this would not be possible. Uh, a lot of folks said, oh, those conferences, all they do is bitch about men. <laughs> Clearly the fact that you're here means that you think this in conference is important. What's changed there? Well, time has passed and people evolve. I was talking to Janice Raj, who used to come to our women's task force and the bricklayers 20 years ago when I first joined the executive board. And looking at the people who were 20 years older than me then, and those that are 20 years younger than me now, there's a huge change of consciousness over that 40 years. And people now, and the younger presidents like uh, Eric and Frank that have come along, they're so much different to the fellows, with all due respect, who were running unions when I came to Washington. So I think, you know, uh, they say make hay while the sun shines. I think the time is ripe for women and, and there are a broader, more open minds leading our construction unions today. Just need to be pushed a little bit like everybody else, but we'll get there. There was no pun intended when you said broad, right? <laughs> Not that time, anyway. <laughs> so, brother, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Frank, tell me something major that's changed in your trade since it started. Well, I, I would have said that, you know, uh, we were at Local 2 in Chicago, the IUEC Local 2 in Chicago <coughs> yesterday, and, and I did get a chance to hear from one of, one of my members, one of my female members, that uh, so, uh, some things that were horrific to me, how she was treated. So I, I, I really did think things were changing. But now I'm seeing that we still need a lot of work. I, I'm going to pay attention to it. I, I, I'll tell you that. So, I, you know, uh, I heard James Boland talk about uh, how things have changed. They, they have changed, but we still got a lot of work to do. And uh, and I, I think we all feel that we're going to we're going to get to that place, and and uh, hopefully we'll be able to help the women out here in the trade. And and l listen, there's great things happening right now. You know, I truly believe we're going to have our first female president of the United States. <laughs> you know, it, and, and if you don't mind, I, I just want to say this, and you need to know this. I, we all had a minute with her at the Building Trades Conference just recently, a couple weeks ago. And I, I said one thing to her. I said that my little daughter is in the audience right now. She got to hear you speak today to Hillary. And I said, you make her believe that anything is possible. So, and, I, and I could tell she was choked up over it. And, and I, I truly believe, I, I think there should be a commercial out there right now for Hillary that's showing a young girl believing that she could be the President of the United States because a woman could accomplish anything. They've proven it. They've proven it throughout history. They've proven it just in World War II, if people forget. They were the ones working the factories. So I got a follow-up question. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, so I did it. So folks come to you and share 
that there are problems, that uh, things aren't working. And uh, so I commend you for saying that. There is a real hesitation to want to speak up that things aren't working, that uh, folks won't get hours. A significant problem that tradeswomen have is they don't get the hours, right? There is a problem that in an apprenticeship situation, we will have sisters who will get dispatched out and they're checkerboarded. They get moved around because they're the diversity hire, okay? And then we have folks who don't give, get enough hours. Brother Boland, I will never forget the conversation that we had uh, at the uh, conference last year. We tend to be closing the bar type of folk sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Just sometimes. And you were astounded by the number of, of sisters who came up and shared with you, I got problems with my hours, right? She had been in for 30 years. So tell me about that story. I heard a lot of stories, and I, I'm not sure that I can recall that one <laughs> specifically. An example. Yeah. But uh, I mean, you, people pay dues to unions to get representation. Uh, that's, where you, that's why you pay dues every month and pay a check off to get representation, and the collective bargaining is the guidelines for representation. It's a contract between the employer and the union. And we don't have a choice. We have to go out and enforce the bargaining agreement for everybody, you know, not just the ones who vote for you in elections. So you have to be fair and representative across the board. I have never seen that as a problem myself. I was trained as a young business agent to go make sure the African-American woman apprentice got on the wall and wasn't on the saw. You go down. And it used to, uh, there used to be stories about me. When I came, it was, hey, let's get with it here. And uh, we did that. That's just one example from my own life. But, I mean, it's just doing, doing our jobs, that representation thing. That's all. And uh, there's another thing, though, I want to spin off of that. You know, uh, um, there's three young women now on our executive council. We got Ruby, Angie, and uh, my friend who introduced me. Lily. And uh, Lily. And uh, they're on there for a reason. I mean, I was taught as a young person that uh, parents and leaders lead by example. And I said, I can't call on local unions or other unions or colleagues to do anything unless we try to do some of the right things ourselves. So I, I think people should think about apart from closing the bar, what sort of example we are to, to people out there, that we do the right things and set pretty decent standards for our international unions and then uh, ask our locals to step up. I think you can see marked improvement when you take proactive steps like that. Leave it at that for now. Absolutely, brother. Thank you. Eric?